Hey, it's show time. The month has ticked by one more time. It's time for the prehistory guys. Question time. Welcome. Welcome wherever you are. I'm Michael. I'm Rupert. Hello, everybody. Yeah, pay attention. <laughs> and I've got an echo, which means I've got you open somewhere else. Yeah. Bear with me. Okay. So if you're new here and you haven't uh, been on a prehistory guys question time before, this is a time every month that we do our best to answer question, answer questions and talking points that are imposed by fans, raving fans, and more often than not our um, Patreon fans, many of whom you'll see in the, the chat right now. So uh, are you ready this time? How are, how are things down there in France? <clears throat> uh, you don't want to be asking me that on air, do you? No. I'm having a challenging time at the moment, folks. All right, I sorry, I asked. In the family, and I'm uh, I'm fielding a lot of stuff like that. Apart from that, everything's mm. fine. Beautiful sunny mm. day here, 16 degrees, sunny mm. all day, lovely. Yeah. That aside, thank you all, folks, for being here. I see lots of familiar faces, lots of familiar names. Um, I hope you'll forgive me if I don't say uh, good evening to every single uh, one of you. If you are new here, though, do pop your name um, and uh, sort of say hello in the chat and let us know uh, where you're from and uh, hope you enjoy the evening. Indeed. I'm going to say a direct, a, a direct hello to uh, Jenny Coffee, though. Yes, Jenny, of course it does. Yes, we're... Um, that you, Never apologise for ignorance. We put our hands in the air for being eternally ignorant. You know, you only know what you know, don't you? Uh. <laughs> uh, well, we do our best. Um, you know, we, we seem to have gathered stuff along the way, though, so we're, we're not too shabby. Maybe you'll catch us out tonight. Who knows? Indeed. Um, Lots of the <clears throat> <early days. laughs> Yes, indeed. And uh, Kelly from South Africa. Wow. And... Um, yeah, Kelly from South Africa and Lynn from Banbury, just two miles, four miles down the road. You know, it's insane. Listen, folks, we're so chuffed because I don't know if you've seen, well, most of you will have done, but uh, our interview with Dr. Lee Clare, uh, lead archaeologist at Gebekli Tepe, which was published just a few days ago. By the end of this evening, if it hasn't done so already, we'll uh, have reached uh, 20,000 views on YouTube, uh, and uh, yeah, not only that, it's um, kind of accelerating as well. So it's it's took hold. Um, mm. it, it's it's ranking well on YouTube. So you know, um, thanks for helping us um, make that possible. Uh, and if you haven't seen it yet, uh, do uh, have a look. Um, Lee was the most fantastic yeah. guest and uh, most erudite. Mm -hmm and clear uh, he, he, about what's going he on there. really was uh yeah he was great to talk to mm. and of course we uh, we now have the uh the open invitation to uh, to go over there to do some mm. filming over there and, and he'll show us around so that's going to happen we're not quite mm. sure when but it's going to happen mm. Mm. uh in other news <clears throat> our patreon supporters you probably those of you you know, you already know this anyway. Um, but recently you got uh, an additional perk behind the scenes. Um, there's an addition of a Facebook group where you can go off and chat amongst yourselves now. Yeah, <laughs> so true. just a little additional yeah. perk for our uh, yeah. Patreon folk. Um, yes. and if it's you're a enjoying... private Facebook group. Only patrons oh. uh, can be in that Facebook group. Um, yeah, yeah. But it just gives you more flexibility to share as a community, which is good. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's not a, an absolute necessity, but it's it's just an extra space for people to go and uh, have fun and, um, you know, uh, express themselves in a prehistoric sort of way. <laughs> <laughs> that came out wrong, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, leave it. <laughs> Mm. Uh, anyway, uh, if you if um, if you've not checked out our Patreon page before, do uh, have a look. Um, we, uh, as you may have gathered from the fact that we've put a Facebook group in place, we've got a wonderful community of people uh, on uh, on Patreon who really do contribute to uh, 
what we do and keep us going and inspire us to do what we yeah. do. So if you fancy joining them, sorry, do have a look at our Patreon uh, page. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, David, uh, yes. <laughs> David, David just said, do we need any admin? Well, we probably do, Dave. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, not yet. They're very well helped. Know, David, uh, who's chatting in here, David Potter. Da David is our he's our right hand man. You know, which is just uh, um, yeah, we rely on him quite heavily a lot of the time. So uh, <laughs> thank you, David. Hi, Pat. How you doing? Uh, yeah, <laughs> from Jay. Hi. Uh, mm. And that is, um, and that's about it, actually. I mean, th there's a number of ways you can support us. There's a Patreon um, uh, page, of course. And we've got a Buy Me a Coffee campaign going on, <coughs> the proceeds of which go to mm. help making our films, which is a kind of almost a separate enterprise now, isn't it? Hey-ho. Yeah. Hey-ho. Yeah, yes. Um, yes, Colleen, it is. Um, um, <laughs> Yes, Colleen's asked if that's an electric kit behind me. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anything well, more to say, the Rupert? Bit... That's behind him. Uh, anything uh, more to say before we move on to uh, questions? I think we should just crack on. Yeah, actually, my um, guitar's been at the we... mender, so it's not behind me. It'll, it'll, it's back soon. How did you manage to break that? I didn't. Uh, I don't know. Something came loose inside. Now you had every opportunity to give some flamboyant answer there. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, sad, isn't it? Oh dear, just a wannabe. <laughs> Let me see. Um, right. Well, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's uh, let's find a question, shall we? Uh, this is the first <laughs> one to come in, I think. Oh no, it's not. No, uh, <laughs> that's the last one to come in. Yeah. yeah. This will do, though. Jimmy, Jimmy Lawley, we can trust Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy says, Jimmy Lawley says, I recently watched a video where very tenuous links between Gebekli Tepe and the Australian Aborigines are suggested. Apparently a couple of symbols on Pillar 18 of Circle 3 are very similar to the Aboriginal symbol for knowledge and more links are being explored. Am I watching the kind of show you warned us about? Yes. What order should we answer? <laughs> oh, you've... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Where do you want to uh, go with that? Uh, well, um, as far as I can tell, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the film that you're talking about, Jimmy. Um, but the, the first answer is no. Australian Aborigines did not build Gobekli Tepe. Um, the symbol that... I think you're talking about on Pillar 18 uh, is, as far as I can tell, I looked this up because your your question surprised me, to be honest. Um, and I did look up a, a massive amount of Aboriginal uh, symbols and their meanings. And the closest thing that I can find is it's not a symbol about knowledge at all. It looks a bit like the symbol for two men talking which i suppose you could interpret as um, uh, as knowledge but but the thing is that all those are aboriginal symbols and a lot of the abstract art that you see at places like the beckley tepe and indeed now in ireland you know you can see some very similar stuff there that a lot of them are just um they're the sorts of symbols that just kind of come spontaneously from you know, whether it's stars as a circle with dots around them or, uh, you know, uh, zigzag, bows, uh, yeah, spirals. You know, there's, there's a lot of common symbols uh, around the world. Um, no, nobody's going to suggest the Aborigines, uh, Australian Aborigines built Newgrange, for example. <laughs> Indeed, no. Although they've got virtually um, identical symbols. You know, one of the problems with with things like this, when Archetypes, you get some researchers yes, who, um, yeah, indeed, yeah, when you get uh, researchers trying to pull these sorts of things together, the trouble is that they are cherry picking so much. You know mm. that there are at Gebekli Tepe, there are there are hundreds and hundreds of symbols, and there's one that looks like it 
you know, looks similar to an Aboriginal symbol on it. There might be one or two. But the point is they're completely ignoring all the others, mm. which is... It's just well, silly. not completely ignoring, but what happens is once you see one correlation, you you go looking for other correlations, but with through the same looking mm. glass, through the same mm. lens, and lo and behold, as soon as something even tenuous pops up, you in, immediately into justifying, saying, "Well, it could be," mm. um, you mm. know, but it's cloud cuckoo land. Uh, and anyway, even if you know, it's the old thing, isn't it? Correlation is no proof of, of uh, causation and you know you mm. can't establish uh, just because something looks similar or coincidental it's impossible to make links between two things unless you've got a separate mm. proof separate evidence uh, otherwise it's just a story in your own head mm. i'm afraid there, there are so many different aspects to this you know that that for example uh, you you look at carvings at uh, gobekli tepe that are 11,000 years old, 10,000 years old. Yeah. And, and you're making correlations with, with modern day Aboriginal uh, symbols. You're not talking about um, engravings, uh, Aboriginal engravings found that, that date to Lord knows how many thousand years ago. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, these seem to be quite random associations as far as I can tell. Mm. Mm. Um, no more. You, uh, John says, uh, listen, causation implies per... per no, it doesn't. Cause, causation implies... Per oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Causation implies purpose. But again, uh, you, you've got to be able to triangulate your... Um, yes, it, it still your, doesn't create your, a link point between and, uh, yeah. Australia and Turkey. Yeah. You know. uh, uh, okay, um, that's enough. I'm uh, sorry to be such a downer on your first question jimmy but i think you knew uh, <laughs> the way that was gonna go didn't you <laughs> um oh i didn't mean to uh it was a rhetorical question so we don't need to answer it uh, really um that's a long <laughs> sorry sorry the whole point of a rhetorical question <laughs> yeah uh, uh pick pick or uh, i wonder what you guys think of must farm I know it's Bronze Age and not Neolithic. Actually, we're prehistory guys. Bronze Age is prehistory. Yeah. I know we prefer, we like, you know, we like dancing about in the Neolithic, but gee. Um, I wouldn't say we prefer it, though. Well, it's our sort of background history. It's what we kicked off with, isn't it? You know, doing yeah. stand we stand. like the so, Bronze Age. So that, that's um, where the, that comes from. Yeah. But the preservation of in Must Farm is just so impressive. I was wondering what you both thought of my, what might come of the analysis of the wood, pottery, textiles, etc. Sorry if you've already covered this. We've not really covered it. We did a few sort of uh, flashes, and there was one thing that's never seen the light of day, which uh, we're going to now. Um, um uh, yeah, we yeah we we talked. Rupert, about it you're a bit time, off. But... You're off centre, mate. You're, you're, yeah, maybe, the, yeah. Um, the the story of my life. The um, <laughs> uh, the the thing about Must Farm is that it's phenomenal on every level. You know, they don't call it the British Pompeii well, for nothing. Um, yeah. It, so can can we say you know what, uh, what Must Farm is for those that might not uh, be familiar? Uh, yeah. Uh, Must Farm is it's a Bronze Age settlement uh, in the east of England that was built. Uh, it was basically over marshland, really. It was built so on stilts with, uh, uh, depending on season, you know, an amount of water underneath it. Yeah. Um, People have probably and, heard of Flag Fen, and it's part of the Flag Fen Basin. I think it's not far hmm. from Flag Fen, in fact, near yeah. Peterborough in Cambridgeshire. Um, the the amazing thing about uh, Must Farm, though, is that it burnt down uh, mm. within a year or so. Uh, I mean, it might have been sooner than that, but it was certainly within about a year of being built. It burnt down and uh, slipped into the, the the marshy, you know, underneath, and so got completely preserved in the uh, in the silts now what they've uh, excavated from there is just utterly breathtaking um, mm. uh, uh, and the thing is that because it's been so well preserved 
uh, the, <laughs> they've even had things like uh, they've got the uh, the insects in the wood. Uh, they can tell what sorts of uh, bugs that the people were living with, uh, fleas from the dogs. There's even uh, dog crap, uh, you know, that was uh, uh, in amongst the houses. It must have stunk to high heaven. Um, but uh, but equally, you know, there was uh, a loom that still had uh, textiles on it, being in you know in the process mm -hmm. of being woven. Uh, well, what are so many different things? One, uh, a fact, date. We need a we need... artifact. Oh, the date. It's between a thousand and eight hundred BC. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my my favourite artifact, I think, is there's a pair of shears um, that are actually they with their own box. The box is made hmm. in exactly the right shape to hold it. As it, you know, if you went and bought. A brand new pair of really expensive scissors uh, today, you know, in a box where they fitted absolutely perfectly. That's kind of what it's like, and mm -hmm. uh, it just shows that you know that wasn't just any old pair of shears. They uh, that that must have been an expensive purchase, I reckon. Indeed, um, we have also one of the uh, an early wheel. I don't know if it's the first wheel that's known of, but of course um, we've got. You know, yeah. 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 Uh, now it must be said that um, the burning down—it's not the whole settlement that burned down. That uh, that there are there are two roundhouses that were on stilts that um, that burnt down. Uh, mm. So I think the settlement itself was a bit more extensive, but also associated with all the stuff that's being dug around there. We've got a whole timeline which extends way back into the Neolithic and. Uh, uh, Back up into the uh, Iron Age, uh, based around this um, this excavation. So it's not just um, artifacts from that little snapshot in time when the uh, stuff burnt down. There's a Neolithic uh, dugout canoe, f for instance, um, that uh, is preserved there. It just speaks, you know, to the riches of the whole Flag Fen uh, mm. basin uh, thing, you know, and and, and stuff that's con continually being. Um, excavated. Um, like, like I said, it's not uh, particularly recent, but you know there are some really nicely preserved Iron Age artifacts. A dirty great mm. sword, uh, mm. uh, I, I believe, which obviously doesn't belong with the burning down of the house. That's much much later. It seems to be a you know there's quite a lot of votive um, offerings gone in there. I think well, the sword was broken deliberately, you know, and then so a lot of that uh, that goes on. But as far as all our insights into life in the late um, uh, Bronze Age, um, it's without parallel, I think, uh, in in terms of the detail of, of human life and uh, what's been going. I can't speak to any particular revelation that's come up recently, um, but I think it's something we must uh, do a special something on. We must go to Must Farm, for goodness sakes. Um, you know, do something like that, even if it's only me going over to Flag Fen and uh, and must um, farm and doing a report like I did from the uh, <clears throat> Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge about the gold of the Great Step a few weeks ago. Mm. That's all I got yeah. recently uh, um, that springs to mind. Or well, about must farm? Yes. Oh, I think we've answered the question. We think it's fabulous, and there's, <laughs> for those of you that might not know about it, then yeah. uh, then you know do look it up because um, it's it's you know a gift that keeps on giving. You know there mm. is mm. that they've learnt so much from it, and there is so much more to be learnt. Um, mm. So thanks for the question, uh, Pick. I'm sorry we don't have any sort of brilliant uh, uh, revelations uh, for you, but all those things, the fact they got wood, pottery, textiles, and poo is going to tell and people poo. a lot. Oh, that was the other thing that came out, wasn't it? That the, the infestations that they, they had, that they lived yeah. with. Yeah. Very personal. Uh, let's not uh, dwell on that. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Benjamin. Benjamin Lawrence. Aha. Aha. I shall, I shall scroll this so we can see it properly. You pro if you're watching this on mobile, you probably won't be able to see this. I shall read it out. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, 
it'll be interesting. I don't know if we've got to, much to say about this. It's such a you know long uh, talking point, and our guess is as good as anybody. But Benjamin asks, do we judge a country's prehistory through the prism of its present? For example, U.S. archaeologists thinking a shell circle was a trading hub, U.K. ones thinking it was a ritual site. We covered that in a flash not so long ago. I've been reading some early 20th century anthropology and been surprised how, having written with a, pro a probity about a country's prehistory, the author then refers to the same country in the present as savage, as if it's failed to play the evolutionary game. Do Greece and Italy, for example, get a fairer deal because they're cradles of cultures we approve of? I hope that wasn't too nebulous. And um, and thanks again for your work. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you for being well, it's a, 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 a faithful fan. Um, uh, I, I'm hmm. not so sure that we're going to, um, you know, because this is a, um, you know, a, a philosophical question about the lenses that we look at things through. Yeah. I would say, uh, go on, Rupert. You were about to uh, no, make a noise. You know, I was just, I was just going to say, uh, it depends what you mean by we, um, <laughs> because yeah, there uh, we go. because you know, it's it's a very subjective thing, isn't it? And you 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 raise the point here from uh, I presume from when we did the flash about the uh, the shell circles that were found in Florida. Um, where the American archaeologists' interpretation was that it was a place of trading, and we made the point in the in the show that if they had been uncovered in Britain, then without a shadow of a doubt, they would have been classified as ritual. And uh, it's that subjectivity that we that we have to be so careful about, you know. On uh, and I think that in many ways your you're right that we, we, you know, we do look at cradles of culture, you know, whether it's uh, Greece or, uh, you know, or, or the Indian prehistory, for example, the Mahabharata, things like that. You know, we, we have this, uh, it's almost an emotive response to the history of those countries. Um, and it has to be said that the, the only reason really that we don't know anything about British prehistory is because the Romans just uh, uh, wrote down in history that we were a bunch of heathens basically <laughs> you know mm. that they, they erased you know it, you think what was lost with the Druids when the Romans uh, finally wiped out the Druids that what we do know from Julius Caesar's own writings <clears throat> is that the Druids breadth of knowledge and scientific knowledge was huge and yet all lost because the Romans just wiped it out. So, mm. uh, you know, so us appearing to be heathens in prehistory. Yeah. It's, it, it, it isn't that thing, you know, history yeah. is the tales of the victors. I think um, it's just, I think it's just something for all of us to be uh, conscious with, uh, about, you know, uh, I think, um, you know, part of the the bent of of Benjamin's question is, you know, that we're, we're full of prejudices and and things like that. Well, yes, we are, <laughs> and we can't help it. Uh, put it this way: if you know, I with Rupert and you know hadn't been doing uh, deep dives on various questions about prehistory, whatever history, what, whatever you like, I'd still be laboring under misapprehensions that probably came from days at early school or school or, mm -hmm. you know, anything. Or it's, unless you're completely, you know, refreshing over and over, you know, l looking at, at how people think and, and uh, reflecting on the assumptions that you make and carry around with you day to day to day to day and being aware that it's very hard to change your mind beliefs are hardwired in there you know it's uh it, it, it there, there are some stats about how hard it is to there's a some it begins with b somebody's law about really how hard it is to change a belief especially if that belief means altering 
your consciousness about how you view things. This is, this is why prejudices are so uh, deep, deep rooted. Um, that's all I've got to say about it, uh, really. Uh, I knew it would uh, go off at a tangent somewhere. Uh, Adam Boots, Adam Boots, thank you so much for your uh, kind words there. And Adam, can we just do a, a sidebar for Adam because he's been so kind. He wants to know if there's been any news on the um, uh, Amazon uh, rock art. Yeah, you say you say Mexican uh, cave paintings. They uh, they were Colombian, um, I think. Oh, I think that's what you mean. Yes, because we we we'd never covered any um, Mexican cave paintings, did we? Unless no, that was no, the druggy we ones. Mexican bits and pieces, but the cave paintings were in Colombia. Uh, no, uh, they were rock face caping. They were they weren't cave yeah, paintings either. Um, yeah. News from uh, subsequent to our broadcast. Um, it was uh, okay. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the story that came out. I'll try to do this uh, briefly. The story that came out was actually a bit misleading, and we nearly made a separate film to put it straight, but we just mm. thought it would get too confusing. The reality is that it wasn't a new discovery. Uh, that some of these paintings had been known about for actually a long time. And this was a new stretch of them or that had been uncovered. Mm. Um, and it was just some journalists being very uh, hasty and trying to make money out of it. Uh, so it was a bit of a misleading article. Uh, nevertheless, the, the, the paintings are real. Very, They are very real. And um, uh, they know that they're old. They've attributed the age because uh, the the bottoms on some of the rock faces, the paintings continued underneath the substrate. So where it was just all leaf mold and, and what have you, the paintings mm -hmm. actually carried on underneath that. So they know that they're not modern fakes. Um, yeah. There had been people yeah. claiming that, that they were not necessarily fakes, but they were very recent. And yeah. uh, seeing as them, yeah. uh, but, some uh, of them seem to be under the, earth surface, under the soil yeah. surface. Yeah. Yeah, but but they are old. There's a lot of people were under the misapprehension. Uh, you know, they uh, some people were questioning how could they be that vibrant uh, color wise when uh, mm. they're that old because they thought it was painted. But it's um, it's done with red ochre, which is a mineral, and mm. it's uh, it, you know its ability to withstand weathering is uh, is immense. You know, you, yeah. you, if you think of uh, you know even in Spain, relatively recently, uh, where they found bones painted in in red ochre, that you know they're still very very red after. I can't remember how many thousand years old these bones are, but you know, it's, red ochre lasts a very, very, very long time. Uh, so that's that's all we can tell you, to be honest. Uh, that's the only new news, or you know, news from what we said, anyway. Uh, Thank you, Adam so Boots. One, yeah, we, uh, and uh, a supplementary will... from uh, a supplementary from Benjamin Lawrence. He says, "Sorry, sneaky second questions. Are you guys doing any tours talks in the UK this year? Wouldn't want to." Miss an opportunity. Um, well, the answer to that is yes. We do believe we're, so. We're doing a tour of Ireland in September. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's going to be a cracker as well. Um, if it's going to be a cracker. If you want to know more about that. It is, uh, well, basically, we're starting at Dublin and we're going clockwise around the whole of Ireland. Um and uh, uh, yeah, if if you want to see all the details and book on it, then you have to go to the Archaeology Channel, um, TAC Tours. Uh, um, we should probably we'll, we'll, well, put a, that, well that's up. a point. Has he has um, has Rick posted it up yet? Last time I looked on the Archaeology Channel, he hadn't actually it's published quite it. That he, it's quite possible that he hasn't. Yet, yeah. but it, it will be published soon because we're still establishing. Um, Otherwise, I would post a link, but I don't think there's a link to go to to no. um, uh, uh, say. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, so but that, you, the date is September. The kickoff date for two weeks. I'll tell you because I've still got it open. I think it's mm -hmm. September the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I haven't. Hold on. Uh, we'll talk about shells for a second while I just find it. Ba -ba -ba. 
I think it's September the 11th. Yeah. Okay. And the, the fact is, numbers will be very limited. Um, we can't take a big coach. It'll be a, it'll be a, 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 a large-ish minibus trip, won't it? Rather than uh, a, a full-blown yeah. coach It's uh, Friday, trip. Friday the 9th of September. It starts and it runs until Tuesday the 20th. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> That'll uh, be so much fun. Uh, uh, it's yeah. going to be grand. Uh, yeah. And well, do you know what I was t said this to you the other day? Um, Benjamin's you know raises a point there that even if we don't get on the you know a talk circuit or what you know, you know have a a talk that we could tour around, we should at least mm -hmm. um, set up you know some paid for you know specialist online talks or even invite people in for talks you know organized talks where we invite archaeologists and others in mm. it's a thought so you know we won't um, waste your time sort of figuring out how that would work right now let's get on to the next question um, <laughs> thanks for that uh, benjamin uh where have i gone there we go um okay peter peter mccarthy asked during the uh 2021, during 2021, the University of Western Australia made discoveries in Saudi Arabia of extensive ancient roads and monuments from the third millennium BC. To what extent can interpretation of these well-preserved features help us to understand landscapes in Britain from an earlier period and a different culture where most of the evidence has been ploughed away or destroyed by development? I'll tell you what, that plays right into our field. That does, Rupert. It it surprisingly... Does. The, the, the yeah, uh, this is actually a, a, an area of constant research that Mike and I are doing in the background. And at yeah. some point, it will be, a, you know, a, a, a big project that comes out. But um, it's just simmering in the background because it's so huge. Um, the uh, the sites that you're referring to, I'm uh, I'm pretty sure if you're talking about the, the University of Western Australia yeah. research, that they are talking about um, kites, which are... Um, animal hunting, uh, well, that, let's call it husbandry traps. These are animal traps um, where animals were steered into these uh, enclosures. And they're called kites because that's the shape that they are. Now, uh, they've been called, uh, they've been related to animal husbandry for a long time. They've been known mm -hmm. about for quite a long time, not just in Saudi Arabia, but uh, um, similar enclosures are found all over the, uh, the Middle East and spreading uh, right up into the Stans as well, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. Um, now, a more recent body of research has said that these are burial sites <laughs> because people always do, because they've found that there are burials associated with them. But you have to factor in that when you go to various cultures around the world, and particularly when you look at places in prehistory, uh, they didn't bury people uh, anywhere where they hadn't lived. You know, you, you, you stayed in your home. Why take somebody out of their home and bury them somewhere else? Um, and so when it's a place, you know, like these... I don't you know, know if you can see, the, Rupert. I've just put the, uh, yeah, a, a picture the in an aerial that we're picture. talking about. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if, if you owned one of those or if you worked one of those and that's where you died, then it's a perfectly reasonable place uh, to, uh, to be buried. Um, hmm. Now, they have... Uh, they have also related these. I mean, the, one of the pieces of research that made us kind of slap our foreheads really was they then started to say that these are uh, parts of huge processionary funerary pathways um, <laughs> because you've got, you know, a lot of these things in a line uh, leading towards oases and, and things like that. So, Between so because oases, the yeah. And they're saying it's funerary. But the thing is that, you know, <laughs> the thing is that you've got a line of them uh, that relate to an oasis because, well, where else are you going to live? Uh, you know, you want to be close to water. 
that's where people lived and uh, uh, and so you know people being buried in their own enclosures or around their enclosures well where else would they be buried it's not a funerary route uh, hmm. it just happens to be where people were living um, yeah it's um, it has to be said th these kites as i've just uh, uh, displayed i'll just display them again just um, so yeah yeah i mean it's not very good because i'm just showing my uh, uh, desktop there um they're quite different from the kites really that are, yeah they're very different from the uh kites which are further up north and into um the, the stands and and so on and so forth these are sort of mid western saudi saudi arabia and those to me don't look like the places you 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 uh, like the kites where you, you the, the animals have nowhere else to go you're herding from um their uh, natural habitat into where you can capture them these look like enclosures of management for uh, animals now these pathways linking places surely these are nomadic peoples and they are moving lots of animals from place to place along these trade routes. And where do you stop on a trade route? At the oasis, mate. Hmm. These are moving people, moving all... And if somebody pops their clogs along the way, it seems to me it's probably quite natural that you bury them alongside the, 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 the trail. Um, hmm. Carrying a dead body up down, uh, through the desert, not a good idea. So mm. it's kind of, well, duh, of course you're going to get burials along these pathways. Mm. And if you're honouring somebody in particular, you can bury them you know, in the enclosure if that was mm. their particular skill, uh, wrangling whatever beasts they uh, had in. The fact that they're near mm. oases, well, I mean, really? Really? I mean... Mm. How much time do you think people had on their hands when they're dealing with life that they've got time to process up blooming, process up and down funerary pathways? Get real. Yes, yes. the urge to process is ah! overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael Abelman says that is not an animal trap. No, well, we're talking about enclosures rather than traps in this instance. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you disagree profoundly, then say so, uh, you know, say why. Um, but... Um, yeah. Uh, but you know they're uh, they are uh, uh, they're known to be animal husbandry related structures from various yeah. other places throughout yeah. uh, the Middle East. Yeah, um, it's it's what uh, they do. Yeah, I mean, why they made them that shape, uh, I would suspect. Uh, and do you know what? We should get a farmer on at some point, or yeah. you know, yeah. or, a, or a reindeer herder from Lapland or something. Yeah. But yeah. The, the reason for having something that's you know, basically a, the, a, an isosceles triangle is that you can you can separate animals out and you can move them down to the narrow end. Uh, it's much easier to uh, to deal with animals when you can force them into smaller and smaller. Areas. Yeah. So that's the, that's the reason for them being triangular, anyway. Yeah, uh, but there was a last bit of of P Peter's question uh, about you know w to what extent can interpretation of these well preserved features help us to understand landscapes in Britain? Well, mm. it, it helps Rupert and I, uh, you know, put together our thesis about the purpose of curses, curses, and mm. any of these kind of. Um, uh, uh, um, marks in the landscape that defy, mm. it seems, and always seem to be interpreted as blooming processionary pathways. And uh, it's becoming more, mm. much, much more and more clear to us that uh, it's to do with uh, yeah. animal husbandry of one sort or another. Yeah. So, yes, to yeah. that extent, we're, it, it just helps us look at uh, uh, people's use of land with a it seems yeah. to us a clearer eye. I mean, you know, it, it's funny. You know, Mike made the point, you know, just then about, you know, how much time do we think people had back then for processing all over the place, that they would build something that was for that degree yeah. of processing. You know, that you, you think that even now, uh, we take it for granted in the developed world. There you go. There's a bias and prejudice. The fact that, you know, we are so obsessed with how we function in the developed world that we forget how much time 
is spent by people who don't live in the developed world, how much time is spent hunting animals, getting, you know, whatever kind of vegetable source that they use. It's just yeah. life is all about that survival. Is life. That is um, all it is. Yeah. Uh, so when you look at um, the landscapes, the prehistoric landscapes that we can see, and we have this ridiculous obsession with saying that it's uh, for ritual purposes. And so nobody is saying, oh, well, if it's ritual purposes, where are the farms then? You know, nobody says it that way around. No. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to publish our little discussion. We had a uh, sort of spoof head to head about uh, Neolithic <laughs> Bronze Age and Iron Age enclosures. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah, Watch out for that. I must republish it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fine. Anyway, thanks for, so much for the question. It, um, you know, um, God else yeah, going again, isn't it? Hauling <laughs> water. Yeah, you've got to be around your water sources. Otherwise, it's madness. Yeah. Mm. John Brooker. Could the carvings of concentric circles on many stones represent home, bank, stroke, ditch, stroke, palisade, stroke, roundhouse, roundhouse wall, inside, fire pit, Discuss writing, writing your answer on both sides of a sheet of lined paper. <laughs> uh, we'll do our, our best. Yeah. Well, well, well could. obviously the straight answer. Uh, the the straight answer is well, it could be. Mm. It could be. Um, it's. I, I do think it's interesting actually that when you look at uh, the 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 rondels. Of uh, of Eastern Europe, uh, Bronze Age rondels of Eastern Europe, um, and later, in fact, I mean they continue quite a lot later. That you you see these structures of concentric circles uh, that are, are made from ditches and or banks, um, and and so you know I I, I think that it's uh, they're very likely carvings of of settlements, but it could be. Could be home, absolutely. It could be home. Don't know, though, mm. do we? Um, no, that's the thing. We've got no way of knowing. So we have to, when when we frame a question like that, the thing is to think. Well, how could I, how could I find information that would either support or, or disprove what my my proposition? And I can't mm. think of you know evidence that could possibly disprove or or, or prove it. That's uh, that's a problem. Uh, and circles are such a ubiquitous symbol anyway. Um, mm. You know, it, it applies to any number of things, even today. Well, especially mm. today, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I just it noticed, is tricky. Because... Go on. I just noticed uh, Nick, uh, Nick D97, sheep in field, narrow trailer, tapering fence, lots of shouting, equals livestock loaded. I see it often. <laughs> Boom. There you go, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm a bit vague about uh, answering that uh, that question, uh, John. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't uh, hold us uh, mm. against it. Didn't didn't even <laughs> fill a sheet of foolscap. That did it. Am I dating myself now? If I had to write an essay, I had to do it on two sheets of foolscap. <laughs> it's not. It's not a fr size of paper that exists anymore, is it? It's all A4. I still my 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 wife still uses uh, one of my old school rough books for notes that I never kidding? filled out. She, you know, she still got one of my school rough books. It's uh, quite funny, really. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, so, um, Sibylla, Neil Carborundum. <laughs> Thank you, David. Better known as uh, our friend uh, Sibylla. Uh, um, yeah, I'll have to... How will I do this? I can't get it to move down so we can uh, see the whole question. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you see what you've done, Sibylla? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll find it elsewhere and I'll read it there. Ah, there it is. Right. Sibylla asks, what do you think, capital U, think are the most recent and most important developments in the study of prehistory in the last few decades. Uh, we've seen more of a focus on A, wide-ranging trade and mobility between places and populations, B, the fact 
that not only adult men were responsible for the progress and inventions that shaped the future. C, the study of DNA, which has brought many revolutionary insights and continues to upset the apple cart on all fronts, thankfully. D, a persistent fluidity and confluence in the development of the human species as a whole and civilizations in particular. What else? Um, so most of this reflects the bias and preoccupations of our time, of course. Fashions exist in thinking about the past as well as in everything else. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the paths of inquiry that take us furthest in the next few years. Uh, once again, I failed to squeeze. Oh, she acknowledges the failure to squeeze question into the required three lines, and you are forgiven <laughs> instantly. I, th I I hope you don't mind if I uh, take the the. Um, um, question off the screen uh, anyway. So basically it's uh, what uh, avenues that have been opening so it's, up. It's what do we think? Um, which is, yes. um, well, I'll, I'll say for me, actually, the most exciting thing, well, okay, two most exciting things. One, DNA. Uh, a DNA, ancient DNA. So we're, we're actually starting to see a lot more clearly about the movements of people overall. Yeah. And, and the thing that excites me most, actually, is isotopes. The fact that we really, scientists, are now really nailing uh, the, uh, the interpretations of, uh, uh, you know, like scraping the insides of pots and knowing what people were making and carrying around and the fact that this cow came from there. And you know, it's just, it's become so much more a measurable science than it ever was, you know, it mm. was always kind of best guesses and interpretations. When I say best guesses, I don't mean that in a, a negative sense. I mean, it, it was down to the experience and the skill of the interpreter. But now it's measurable. And that just makes it so much more exciting. You know, you think the Denisovans would never have been discovered if it wasn't for modern tech, from that point mm, of view. Mm, mm. Um, you know, the it's interesting, because now, these, these, um, uh, these techniques, you know, being data driven and, uh, and and being, you know, science really digging into archaeology. Forgive the dreadful pun. It creates a problem, you know, because historically, you know, to, to a certain uh, point, archaeology is as is an interpretive um, uh, uh, art almost. You know, it's it's been a, a work divining stories from the scant data available, from the constructing of dates by typology and stratigraphy. Stratigraphy? That's the right word, isn't it? Uh, it's, has, it's been the A word, if that's what you mean. <laughs> uh, you know, ha has been a, a laborious work for a lot of people, but also, you know, leaps of imagination have been, had to have been made to pull it all together. So a lot of, mm. uh, you know, faces have been um, put out of joint uh, by the fact that over the past decades, a lot of um, darlings have had to be thrown out the window because <laughs> mm. uh, they're proved to be just plain, plain mm. wrong. Mm. So it will be interesting. The problem is that there is such a tsunami of data that mm. is coming from this area, coming from DNA and from uh, isotopic analysis, that I worry that there aren't enough archaeologists to process it. Mm. And well, that's, that, that's almost certainly true. You know that uh, that you you can have the uh, uh, the chemical results from a, a single uh, excavation. Could be twenty or more years of uh, of you know post excavation analysis. Uh, you know, yeah. it can be a long time before we actually see the results of those. Yeah, and I hope what I hope doesn't happen is that the because the uh, the, the the science behind all this is quite rarefied stuff. I, I'm not. I don't understand genetics in the way you need to be able to understand genetics in order to be able to uh, you know produce an, an analysis and I certainly don't you know understand deeply uh, the process of uh, isotopic analysis that when archaeologists suddenly come out and say declare something based on dna or based on isotopic analysis that the public doesn't feel 
left out of the process somehow because they don't understand that the the missing link that that bit do you know what i mean rupert i do know what you mean but i i also think that what i mean is uh, i hope that the 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 what people are saying is taken as seriously as if you know that they were handing you a piece of pot from out the ground and saying this is so as much as well this is what the dna is telling us and I hope the, that the general public won't be going, yeah, but I don't really like what you're telling me and I don't understand the signs anyway, so forget it. That happens anyway, actually, to be fair. Mm. So I hope it doesn't get... What I'm saying is I hope the, you know, the analysis doesn't get divorced from... Uh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, uh, it's, I, I suppose it is true that, you know, academics... Um, <laughs> Again, this is not said with any disrespect to any of them, but you know the trouble is that you know anybody in any field, you know, they're, they're, everybody is trying to make their work stand out, which yes. means they can be quite proprietorial ab about the research that they've done. So sometimes yeah. I think it does get a bit separated away. Uh, and, we, were, uh, we were on a uh, we were on a conference uh, not very long ago, online conference that was about. A DNA, and it was principally geneticists that were talking, and it was palpable how uh, so many of the archaeologists present didn't understand the geneticists' work either. Uh, yeah. You know, and that's you know that's, that makes for a true. very difficult you know uh, yeah. situation. But you know, it'll 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 all come out in the wash. Yeah, and it'll what are you tittering about, Bob? Well, it'll take it'll take a moment. I was just remembering that, you know, and there's, there is quite a schism um, because archaeologists are not trained to, uh, you know, mm. interpret. It. The trouble is, the date that kind of data gives them very little wriggle room. Yeah, to, to exercise yeah. their brains in the way they usually do. That's the problem, yeah. uh, and not enough, yeah. um, you know, up to date with what's yeah. really going on. And, and well, yes, yeah, I mean, Graham has commented there. Graham Allen he says, uh, um, still to see enough evidence to be able to decide that an indigenous population was as completely displaced as has been suggested. Um, and the, <laughs> the thing is that that is what the genetics says. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and it's what the results of all excavations correlate. There's nothing that conflicts that. And, uh, and so the problem with that is how do you interpret it? Mm. Um, because, uh, you, you know, there have been all these suggestions of, uh, you know, whether it was disease, uh, whether it was, because, uh, you know, uh, we know there was plague in the Bronze Age. I'm sorry, is, is my feed really as jerky as it appears to be to me? I am no. on 4G. But, no, you sit, you're uh, just slightly off to one side and, and you go blurry from time to time. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I still haven't got fiber optic installed, even though they promised to do it again, and again, and again. Fingers crossed for the 28th. Um, um, no, they cancelled that one. Oh, you're kidding me! No. All right, move on. Move, uh, on, move on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean that that's it really. I mean we just keep waiting for uh, a, a, a new interpretation. You know, if somebody comes yeah. up with a bit of evidence that gives you another angle of interpretation that makes more sense to us than than mm, we've had mm. so far. You know, I mean, roll yeah. on that day. Yeah. Um, Do you know what? We I'm, know that I'm, it happened, we don't know why. Yeah, uh, uh, Graham is absolutely right, though. though I think there are problems with that uh, population changeover because the only evidence mm. we've got is coming from, you know, probably elite burials. And I think I remember, yeah. I, I was in that conversation, I remember chirping up and saying, well, actually, what if... <laughs> this represents you, you did but yeah you did but the, the the simple fact is that if it was if it wasn't just the elite burials then that dna would still be present in us yes in modern day populations yeah that would the dna would still be there and it's not yeah. um so you know that's that's the fly in that ointment um yeah so we don't know we wait to Have find we out uh, I'm worried now. We got off topic. I've forgotten. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We answered Sevilla. Well, I hope we answered to her satisfaction anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, indeed. Hold on. Oh, I'm turning the wrong knob here. 
<laughs> what are you doing? Yes, thank you, Sibylla. Jolly good. I don't know. My computer's decided I'm uh, I'm doing something else. Oh, that's why it is. Sorry. It mm -hmm. was trying to uh, control Apple Music. Um, okay, Colleen. Colleen. Hi, Colleen. How are you doing? Have you heard of the oh, Stonehenge yeah. Enigma? It's a video trilogy about a theory that Stonehenge was once surrounded by water on three sides and includes ideas about Atlantis. Uh, well, the short answer is no, hadn't, actually. Um, it um, sounds a bit worrying to me. Um, um, uh, yeah, Colleen, I, 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 I've, got to, I've got to be honest here, all right, because um, uh, you're one of the crew, so I, I can't be dishonest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as soon as Atlantis is mentioned, I'm afraid I slap my forehead because... Um, it, for me, it's one of the greatest um, uh, myths in, in in humanity. That if you actually follow the evidence, then Atlantis didn't exist. It was a story made up by Plato. Uh, if if there really was a place called Atlantis, Plato wouldn't have been the only person who wrote about it. He wrote about it in, I believe, two stories: the Socratic Dialogues. Um, uh, nobody else has written about it. Uh, and if it was, well, obviously they have subsequently, but, uh, but you know, back in the day. And the thing is, you've got to remember that, uh, that uh, Plato was a philosopher. He wasn't a historian. Um, and uh, if Atlantis had been a real place, then in my mind anyway, it would have been talked about by all manner of different cultures. We would know from the Greeks and the Egyptians, the you know, Mesopotamia, we would, they, they would have been trading with this phenomenal place. It wouldn't just be Plato that, uh, that referenced it. Um, mm. And that's kind of where it begins and ends to me, for me. Um, but as for the Stonehenge Enigma, uh, I, I haven't seen it. I mean, I've, uh, I have read some critique of it, and I'll be honest with you, there was one bit in particular that that almost made me put. Well, no, I'll be honest, it did make me put my grouchy hat on, um, with, <laughs> and that was that somebody was defending the Stonehenge Enigma in relation to the posts that were excavated from what um, was the car park, yeah, and and saying that these posts were uh, pine. True, yeah. Uh, but saying that uh, that this is another thing that proved that uh, that uh, our history of Stonehenge is wrong, because we didn't have pine in Britain in the Neolithic, and that is total and utter nonsense. Nonsense. Uh, Pin Pinus sylvestris, the Scots pine, which is now only found in Scotland. Um, at the end of the uh, of the Ice Age, uh, in, in fact, you know, a long time after the Ice Age, it covered the whole of Britain. You had uh, Scots pine right down into southern England. Uh, so, you know, the fact that people are saying that, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Yeah. Anyway, um, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, because uh, Neolithic, uh, the, uh, the, 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 these are Mesolithic anyway. They were. Um, they're, they're much much earlier than Stonehenge itself. Uh, those yes. those poles. So I don't quite, uh, I don't get it anyway. And anyway, they're only we've only found four of them because those were, that's where the car park was excavated. Uh, that, that's true. <laughs> but there's also the fundamental mistake yeah. that uh, that people are saying that those or the interpretation therefore is that these posts. Are Stonehenge, you know, that if Stonehenge no. is that much old, it's not. They're completely unrelated. You know, it's like um, when they um, when they built near where I used to live um, uh, in southwest London, mm. they uh, they were doing excavations. That, that were excavations. They were digging to put the foundations in when they were building a new John Lewis superstore, and uh, uh, and they uncovered a complete Roman cattle market. 
Um, now, you, you might think, what am I talking about? But what I'm saying is, by extension, you know, that you could say, well, archaeologists of the, of the future would say that uh, John Lewis wasn't built in the 20th century um, because they'd found these remains that were 2,000 years older. You know, it's just a silly thing to say just because they found other remains on the same site. There's no correlation between them at all. Mm. Um, and, having said that, I'm sure it's a good story. Uh, yeah, a good a good yarn. And the trick is to be able to tell one from the other. Mm. Uh, okay, and we're winding our way towards the end of this evening. Is any, I, do, I don't know if anybody... Um, we're on on the hour... Uh, you know, which which is great. We do have uh, uh, we had a, a late question came in, um, <laughs> so we probably have time, but we didn't haven't had time to have a a look and a, a thought about it. So it would be rather a fresh uh, answer, wouldn't it? Unless somebody in that case, before we go on that, then can I pick up something that Kevin's just said, which is <laughs> which is Kev Riley, nice. yeah, yeah. Kevin says. Um, uh, Kevin says the tsunami which devastated Doggerland uh, would have seemed like the entire world flooding for those who survived living in Norwich, but truly not a world <laughs> event. Britain is only world famous in Britain. D absolutely, absolutely. Which is why when you look at some of the, the flood myths uh, coming out, that, uh, you know, mm. it's amazing how there are flood myths in, in every culture in the world. Actually, every culture in the world has a flood myth. Um, I think I'm right in saying that. Certainly, um, uh, the majority of them do. And uh, and you know, the, the thing is that we, because we like to make patterns of things, you know, we try to attribute it to a single event. When the reality is, you know, how many tsunamis must there have been throughout, uh, you know, human history? Uh, any one of which, exactly as you say would have felt like a global event for the survivors. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very good point. Mm. And I mm. thank you for making it. <laughs> um, well, that's interesting coming from uh, Kevin because we have, a, we have a question from our other Kevin. Do we? What does Kevin say? Kevin Murray. Hello, Kevin. Are you with us, Kevin? We owe Kevin one, so he get he gets his 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 question up there, even though he posted late and he posted it in the wrong place, and we probably haven't a clue what to say to it. Nevertheless, uh, Kevin has been very kind to us, and uh, so you know, here it comes right back at you. Is the discovery, stroke invention, stroke creation of a calendar, a religious stroke real, ritualistic event, or a scientific discovery? Nice one, actually. How would the introduction of a calendar have changed society in prehistory? You don't need a stone circle to tell the time, but you need to be able to tell the time to build a stone circle. Mm, controversial. How else can large numbers of people from over a wide area gather for feast, stroke, celebration, etc. at Durrington Walls? Oh, I see where you, I think I see where you're coming from. Yes, I know mm. you're not Kevin Murray. Um, yeah, <laughs> I said I meant I said the other Kevin. Yes, Kevin. it's all right, Kevin. We're, we're not confusing you with. Uh, no, with no, we know Kevin. we've we've got two Kevins in, in Patreon, yeah. and. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah. um, I, okay, well, the first thing that I want to throw out of that, uh, Kev, is that uh, you need to be able to tell the time to build a stone circle. No, you don't. You just need a long piece of rope. Um, <clears throat> uh, but apart from that, yeah, I agree with everything. Well, else well, I think said. I think what yeah. Kevin means, you need to be able to tell the time in order to have the purpose to build a stone circle for which people gather at particular times. If you see where I'm coming, that I don't know if I'm... I, I do see where you're coming, but I, I would still argue with that. Um, you know, you, you don't need to tell the time. If, if you know where yeah. sunrise is and you want it to face sunrise, and then you just make the stones equidistant after that, that's all mm. you need. Yeah. However, um, you know, um, Ke Kevin's not here to, uh, to argue his, uh, his point. But but it's a but the over personal trainer. Huh? I hope he's with his personal trainer, Kevin. 
<laughs> Kevin, Kevin is already booked on our Irish tour, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, anyway, I digress. But I think that the, the headline bit of the question is the discovery uh, of a calendar, a religious or a scientific uh, discovery. Um, mm. And um, I don't know. I've never ans uh, asked or sort of really gone down this route before, but I should think they're intrinsically entwined. Yeah, exactly that. I, I think that some, something that we, uh, we should remind ourselves really is that if you go that far back in time, you know, it's only really because of the Greeks that we've separated out, uh, you know, each of the scientific disciplines, if you like, you know, and uh, made them into different areas of study. I think that, you know, back at a, t a period of human history when nobody really, un you know, wh what is the sun? What are these lights in the sky and all that? Uh, for superstition to have held sway and uh you know so you can have the scientifically minded measuring everything but whether you would separate that out from your spiritual or or religious beliefs is you know it's a moot point uh, and so mm -hmm. it's probably uh you know very much in the same bucket you know we know there's so many sun-based uh, solar worshipping cultures if you like uh, through mm. human history mm. um so so yeah i think it's it it is probably both and certainly ritualistic if you're talking about seasonal feasting and that kind of thing yeah yeah and but i mean it, the huge uh, question is um you know how people organize themselves uh, when they haven't got mm. actual clocks, because clearly people were gathering at particular times of the year. Um, at uh, they needed to know, well, you know, I've <laughs> I tell you, even with Apple Calendar on my uh, iPhone, <laughs> I I mm. missed put getting my car in to have its service round the corner. I, I don't know why something went wrong, but. It, people needed a reliable way of making sure that they came to the same place at the same time, you know, from different parts of, uh, of the land. Um, mm. So, yeah, the it really does beg an enormous question of. about uh, timekeeping and, you know, the calendar. How do you keep the calendar ticking over in synchronicity with each uh, community? But we've have... totally divorced ourselves from the natural world in the developed world. Um you know, how many people do you know who can uh, who just wherever they are outside, they can say that's east? Mm. You know, very, very few. Mm. Um, uh, and, you know, the simple fact is that, you know, there are cultures, you, you know, I mean, you, you do that with uh, Australian Aborigines, for example. Yeah. And a lot of the time uh, they, they talk about it's on your east or it's on your west. They don't talk about left and right. It's always in relation to, uh, to to your relationship with the earth, um, yeah. and, and the thing about that, the, the reason that that is so important is that if it's on your east or it's on your west, that is always the same thing. On your left or on your right is different from the person that's facing you. Um, you know, so so there's a good reason for uh, you know for cardinal points and directions to be understood and i just but, think that ancient people would have been far more finely tuned to yes, the passing of time absolutely and here's the thing about human beings we find ways of automating stuff no matter how yeah, brilliant we are at, you know, at, at intuitively doing stuff or learning stuff you know in to be intuitive about things what is it? Something about our confidence in ourselves? We have to find ways of automating s stuff. So it, all that said about ancient pe peoples, absolutely right. But it still wouldn't stop them putting stones into, in the ground to mark off when things are happening so that they can be more confident and, you know, pass off responsibility to some stones in the ground rather than having to remember all that stuff. Because mm -hmm. it takes work. You know, for these things to be passed down, if you pass, 
pass the responsibility off onto uh, sticking some stones in in the ground. Bingo, you know, you, you're on the your way to your iPhone, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> and and dumbing yourself down <laughs> irretrievably. <laughs> and on that note, yeah. <laughs> on that note, <clears throat> yeah. Well on that note, everybody. we're out of questions. Do you know what? Uh, there, there was, and I'm a bit frustrated about this. Um, I, I, okay, I'll be 100% honest here. I can't remember which Andy it was, but one of our Andy patrons yep. put a lovely question on Patreon, and I don't remember what the question was, but it was a good question. And he's, And he asked, have I put it in the right place? And I said... No, go to YouTube, click on this, click on this, uh, and type it in there. Well, he obviously didn't get that message. <laughs> so uh, we haven't got his question, and uh, and I couldn't find it when I went looking for it oh, earlier did, on. Oh, uh, did Andy not uh, ask it under the... Um, um, no, it's just Kevin. Yeah, I couldn't find it. Oh, no, we're complete. I'm completely... Kev, R Riley, my humble apologies. That was a question from Kev Riley. Kevin Murray asked a completely different question, which we did well oh. answered. Right, Kevin, so board. sorry. And Sybil, you're quite right to put me right as well. Um, yeah, I don't know how I managed that. Because, uh, oh, I know what it was. Perhaps I didn't click on more questions. So Kevin, Kevin, uh, Kevin made two posts and said, one post was, my question is as follows. And then the next question down was, is the discovery invention of creative a calendar? And I thought it was Kev right, Kev. Uh, oh. I'll, I'll stop. I'm digging my own hole here. Sorry, You Kevin. are digging a, digging a humongous hole. Um, mm -hmm. uh, c uh, just uh, an, a response to uh, Boomer You. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Olmec calendar... Uh, astonishing and in fact uh lost south american civilizations generally um their astronomical work was uh was astonishing and again mm. it's a, a, it's very sad that so much of that is lost yeah, yeah. So anyway, as ever, folks, it's really great. Uh, thanks for your contributions in the chat there and for chatting so nicely. Good mm. on you. Congratulations to, to you lot. Um, yeah. Which sort of brings me around again to say, you know, if you want to have these kinds of exchange of views and, and, uh, and, uh, and things in a safe space, our Patreon um, uh uh, Facebook group would be a good place to go. Obviously, you have to be a patron to get access to it. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not in that community and, and want to be amongst uh, like-minded people, then uh, our Patreon page is a, is a good place to, to be. Just saying. Mm. Links in the description. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I also want to say, um, uh, Martin... Before Caledonia, folks, yeah. um, uh, Martin put a comment up. Uh, oh, I found it. Here you go. Uh, it's just uh, he's uh, so this is before Caledonia for those of you that don't know. Uh, Martin said, if anyone's interested, I, I have an Orkney Ness of Brodga video on YouTube this time next week. So I'm just uh, uh, giving you the heads up because uh, Andy does some uh, some uh, Andy. Sorry, eh? Martin. <laughs> Martin does some great films. On his yeah, channel yeah. there, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Martin also asks, uh, are, "Are we filming at any sites soon?" We are not. We haven't got any formal arrangements to uh, no go and it's, do stuff. Um, um, it's uh, it, it's all been put up in the air uh, uh, of late because I got family stuff going on and. Uh, mm. um, <laughs> While we're, we're continuing yeah. to keep, you know, what we promised to do uh, going, we're a bit on the on the back foot, as it were. There are headwinds, shall we say, that uh, are preventing us really yeah. getting out and, and getting dirty with uh, with stuff. Um, yeah. So bear with us uh, with that. So the, yeah. if there is something in the slate, as it were, that we want to do next and said we'd do, do next, is actually going to Karnak. 
mm-hmm. um, uh, and doing something around that. You know, I, I don't know how what sort of form that will take, but in terms of formal making a formal film, that was the, that's the one that's in the slate. I can do what I like, however, and I can get out and about. Now, <laughs> what I want to do is yeah. get out and make some some shorts. Uh, short films, uh, you know, on places that are accessible to me in, in, in the environs, you know, I'm sort of on the edge of the Cotswolds here. So, of course, the seven uh, Cotswold tombs. Uh, and if I go a bit further west into Wales, all sorts of stuff opens up. In fact, one I do want to do a, a thing about is go up to uh, near Conway Bay, where Druid Circle is about, above Penmanmaar. Up there because that's a fan. It's not just that Where wonderful stuff. Pen man ma- oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Druid Circle uh, up there is not just at the Stone Circle, but a wonderful complex that speaks volumes to the amount of trade. And uh, there's an axe factory up there, one of the oldest um, ridgeways uh, trade routes uh, in the country up there. So that's worth having a look at. Uh, so I could do that on my own. Um, we'll let you know, mm. and especially Indeed. if you're one of the Patreon uh, Patreon supporters, uh, that's the one of the big things about the, of being on the inside track and, and knowing what we're up to. We do k- try to keep people up to date. Okay, mm. Indeed. that's all I got. And, uh, uh, and we, uh, you know, when we've got. Things like, you know, when we've arranged uh, to go and uh, meet up with Lee uh, in Turkey, uh, we'll let you know. It's going to happen. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, just fingers crossed uh, that the uh, the wheels get oiled more easily. Uh, thanks for asking, Lynn. Not great. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, you know everything, you know. everything works out one way or another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay, um, uh, uh, Dale. Yeah. Oh, D- Dale's made it a bit late in the day, Hello, Dale. Um, well done. but nevertheless, <laughs> you'll be able to scroll back through. It's fine. It's fine. Loads of good stuff. Loads of good stuff. All right, oh. we're done for the moment, Rupert. Say bye bye to the nice people and thank you for being with us. Thanks for your support. See you soon, Thanks folks. for your enthusiasm. All best. Yeah, we love <laughs> it. <laughs> bye. See you.